Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome Joey Klein, who is in Denver, Colorado. How are you doing, Joey? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. And Joey is the author of The Inner Matrix and founder of the Inner Matrix System. And he's here to help you discover what's holding you back from your lucrative career, vibrant health or fulfilling relationship, or indeed anything in between. And more importantly, what to do about it. So we're going to talk about your book, which is The Inner Matrix, Leveraging the Art and Science of Personal Mastery to Create Real Life Results. So, um, Joey, let's get straight into it. Um, tell me about the genesis of the inner matrix system. I mean, where did it come from? Where did you, how did you create this in the first place? Yeah, so it really, you know, happened uh, quite organically. Um, it all started when I was a bit younger in my uh, early, early 20s, late teens. And I was kind of an out of control teenager, didn't know what I wanted, wanted to do, didn't know what I wanted to be up to. Um, and I remember coming to a moment where I was like, if I keep living the way that I am, um, I'm very likely not going to be alive in the next year because I was doing some pretty radical extreme stuff. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I'm here to live for something more. Um, and I said, like, like, what's important to me? What do I want to strive for? And I remember thinking, like, what's most important is I want to be happy. I want to know what is peace. Like, what's fulfillment look like? And I remember looking around me at the time, like my family, my friends and, and things like that. And, and I really didn't have an example of people who were living fulfilled lives. Um, fast forward, I ended up meeting a mentor and studying like ancient wisdom traditions, uh, traveled to India, meditated in temples, Thailand, um, Taoist meditation, uh, Japan, etc., and really kind of dove into these inner training arts, if you will. Um, and I found sort of the, the training system or the tools, the techniques uh, to, to kind of you know, manage emotions and find a sense of peace, fulfillment, mm -hmm. etc. And then I got that got curious, like, why is this working? Um, ended up with another mentor in the art of psychology. And then I, I met a Harvard trained uh, neuroscientist who helped me to understand, like, what is this inner training stuff doing for the brain? Um, and I found that it had a lot of real world application. Um, and so like, like that basically, you know, sort of me on a path where a uh, mentor of mine, you know, recommended I start working with clients one on one and sharing the things that I learned because it, this is 20 years ago. So like, mm -hmm. you know, meditation was not mainstream at the time. Inner training was very taboo. You know, it really wasn't understood, yeah. um, but it got really fast results, especially if you did the right things. And so I had some of my mentors start referring me clients quickly. I had a private practice, 80 plus clients. It was overflowing. My clients asked me to start teaching like workshops, seminars. That turned into 40 plus work, uh, weekends a year. Um, and then and then my clients, you know, asked me to write a book. And basically about 15 years into this, I wrote The Inner Matrix. And it was really a, a distillation of, of all of the best tools, techniques, and strategies that just fundamentally got results and outcomes for people in every walk of life from entrepreneurs to stay-at-home mom and dads, et cetera, really focusing on the inner game of training. Um, and you know, if it, if it worked, you know, it got in the book, if it didn't, it didn't get in the book. Right. Um, and it was like, I had a real life trial and error, you know, kind of like, um, you know, you know, space to see what was really effective. And, and today over 80,000 people have gone through the training. So everything in the book, wow. you know, has been proven thousands of times over. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me a little bit about um, what was some of the ancient wisdom that you came across? Because it's, it's funny because we live in this, we live in this world of, of technology, of, of, you know, we're evolving fast. Everything's moving rapidly, new stuff all the time. Everything old is kind of being pushed to the side. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the ancient wisdom, because I think that's a place where a lot of people need to rediscover, uh, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, root, you know, rootedness in, in ancient wisdom and stuff passed down through generations, etc. but we've become the, you know, the throwaway generations. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Instant gratification, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, if I were to sum it up, there there are two takeaways that that I really got, which is, you know, you know, back in the day, um, before we had all the science that we have today, ways to kind of measure stuff, right? Live MRIs and all these all these neat mm -hmm. gadgets. It, you know, they really, you know, you know, were like what like like what makes us feel better. So if they if they did a certain breath, and it made them feel better, it gave them more energy. They did that breath more, right? If they ate a berry and it was poisonous, they died. And they're like, oh, don't eat that berry, right? 
And so for thousands of years, trial and error was really, you know, very much, hey, if I do this, I feel better, it works. And then, and then that got passed on and eventually, you know, repeated. And so one aspect of the ancient wisdom traditions that, that holds so much value is the fundamental understanding of nervous system management. And so if you understand, right, like when you wake up in the morning, the right, as an example, breath practice to do, like you basically can replace coffee, right? You, you, you create a lot of energy, you stimulate your brain, you get the sympathetic nervous system active in the right way. And if you want to calm down, right, you can use some of these inner training techniques to essentially, you know, deactivate fight or flight and, and really turn on the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest, and which, which does a whole lot for your healing. So I think there's like practical application where it's like, hey, mm -hmm. this thing as a technique, if we sort of, you know, take it outside of, um, some of the spiritual dogma that can be there, although there's value in that. Um, it's like, hey, doing this technique produces this result. And, and they've done it thousands of years for a reason is because it, it fundamentally works. So I think, you know, there's so much value in going back to some of those understandings and principles, right? The second thing that I, that I really think is, is highly valuable there that, that we've come away from is the understanding of who I am produces the outcomes and the results in my life not what I do, right? So it's like, I think so much, we, we wanna change our life and people go, you know, I need to get a better job or I need to make more money or mm -hmm. I need to build a business, right? And all that can be great. And I'm not saying that those aren't things, people sh things that people sure. should do, but what really positions them to succeed is who are they bringing as themselves to their business, to their relationship, to their family, et cetera. And so if we, if we get kind of, you know, look at it from an internal space, if I bring frustration, agitation, overwhelm as who I am being in my, you know, romantic relationship, right. I'm going to, I'm going to break that relationship down. I'm going to induce stress on my body. And it's like that the outcome that I answer to is not going to be great. If I try to enhance my communication skills, if I try to, you know, change some quote unquote behavior through action, that's going to be a very challenging thing to do. And it's probably not going to render the result. So we have to really go into this idea of like ownership and go like, who am I being in the relationship and, and how can I show up here as who I am that aligns with the, the vibrant connected, you know, relationship that I really aspire to fill of love and vulnerability, et cetera. And it really does start with not what am I going to do in the relationship or learning new tactics and strategies, but it's like, Hey, let's manage myself first and, and see if I can have compassion for my significant other. Can I, can mm -hmm. I get access to, you know, looking at them through the lens of my mind and really appreciate all of the great things about them. And if we look at relationships that thrive, you know, people bring that essence of who they are to the relationship. And if we look at relationships that don't thrive, you know, we're critical of our partner. We're always putting each other down. We're getting frustrated, right? Overwhelmed. We avoid each other. And it's like, it's like, who are we being truly does define the outcomes and the results that we get. But I think that there's, there's not a lot of resources out there to really assess who we are being from an internal core sense, emotion, thought strategy, nervous system, and, and how do we train that and really alter that in an efficient and effective way to align yeah. with who we need to be to produce the results that we want. Yeah, and it, and it's interesting. It's interesting, Joey, because um, you know I feel today that uh, you know with the pervasive culture, with social media, with our devices and everything, the world is sort of set up to make to um, is set up to almost make sure that you do not spend any time with yourself. You know, you're always distracted. There's always something, and I think this is I think this is the big gap. Or, uh, or or the big opportunity for people now is to is to spend a little time with themselves, like you said, and un, and uncover who they really are. But unfortunately, it's it's almost going counter to the culture we have today. Yeah, I, I agree with you one hundred percent. Right? It's like instead of looking to to create from the inside out, so many people are caught in the trap of of trying to create from the outside in. So, meaning mm -hmm. if I'm not happy. I'm looking for a romantic relationship so that it will make me happy. Or if I'm not, if I don't feel successful, right? If I don't feel confident in myself, mm -hmm. valued, then I look to go create more money or build a business so that I have this external, you know, um, representation that is somehow going to make me feel confident or make me feel successful or make me feel proud of myself. And, and it just doesn't work that way. And even though we have evidence over and over again, 
that you know creating things outside of ourselves doesn't necessarily translate to peace fulfillment and 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 mm -hmm. you know happiness inside ourselves doesn't mean we don't get caught in that trap and to your point like we have so many you know distracting coping mechanisms in our life today right it's like if i feel a little anxious i can pull up facebook and just scroll and avoid that anxiety that i feel inside myself which actually just you know, fosters more anxiety, it, it intensifies it. Or I can turn on Netflix, right? And just kind of numb out in front of the television or there's sports, right? Or there's work, I can just drown myself in work. Um, some people it's exercise, right? So we have all these different options that are just immediately accessible where we literally don't have to deal with ourselves ever. And so like, like mm -hmm. um, a lot of my clients, when I first take them on, I, I give almost everybody the first exercise. And I had this very, very high powered um, defense attorney um, and, and I remember I gave her a practice, right? And I was like, listen, what we're going to do to start with in terms of like building or, or, you know, training this inner reality is I want you to take 10 minutes a day and all you're going to do, you're not going to read, you're not going to meditate, you're not going to breathe. You're, you're not going to do anything. You're just going to sit with yourself 10 minutes a day. And at the end of the 10 minutes, I just want you to take note of how you feel and just what is your overall experience, right? And at the, you know, and I give this practice to almost everybody, you know, when I first start with them and, and almost nobody makes it 30 days, right? Most people, they bail out on day four and they say, Joey, I hate meditating. They call it meditating, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, no, you don't hate meditating. You hate being with yourself, right? Yes. Like, like who you are inside yourself as who you are being is uncomfortable to be with. And so what's great is that now you're aware that you're a little bit uncomfortable to be with. And so let's create and train a self that you can't wait to be with so that when you take those 10 minutes a day and you close your eyes, you're like, I'm amazing. This is amazing. And if we're not driving in the world from that place, then it's going to be very hard to create the outcomes and the results that we want. And then when we do create them, we don't get to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when people make it through that, that phase, um, uh... What, what are some of the revelations that they have, you know, apart from the fact that they suddenly realize that they can actually be with themselves? Because, I mean, I, I agree with you. Uh, I, I know people that if I said to them, take 10 minutes out every day, lock your phone away, sit there and just be, they'd be like, are you mad? <laughs> so what are so what are some of the things when people make it through that phase? What are some of the changes that they immediately or how do they feel? Yeah. So here's, um, you know, here's, here's a common theme that, that I see, you know, literally having done this with, with thousands and thousands of people mm -hmm. is um, typically it's like a little uncomfortable at first. And they're like, why am I doing this? Right? Like, why in the world am I wasting this time? And it, it doesn't feel great. This is no fun. It's a waste of time. I got things to do that kind <laughs> of thing. Right. And, and it's a little bit, a little bit challenging sometimes to build a routine. Once they get inside the routine, and, and this doesn't take very long, we're talking if you're doing the right inner training practices, right? I don't like the idea of meditation uh, today mm -hmm. because it, it, it kind of is misunderstood, right? We think of meditation yep. as like, I'm supposed to sit down and just clear my mind and something amazing is supposed to happen. Or like meditation is just like saying some mantra over and over again. And there's a place for those things. But for me, it's it's like if we if we execute the right inner training technique, you know, within two to four weeks, you can experience radical results, right? So we're not talking months and months and months of effort here. We're talking, you know, a very short period of time. And what happens is very quickly people go, oh, I simply can't do without that 10 minutes a day where I align myself, mm -hmm. I tune myself up and I prepare myself for the day because what it gives us the ability to do is basically go, hey, what do I want to feel today? Like imagine being able to ask that question. Hey, what do I want to wake up to today? And you go, hey, I want to be joyful today. No matter what happens right. today, I'm going to I'm going to nail this thing called joy and happiness and I'm going to go to work in that state. I'm going to hang out with the kids in that state. I'm going to be with my family in that state. And that and that's the, the energy, the essence that I'm going to drive through my day and then be able to complete your day, go to sleep and then wake up and then choose it again the next day. Right. As opposed to having to manage whatever we wake up to. Most people, they wake up to whatever they wake up to and that defines their day. So they wake up to maybe you know, fatigue or overwhelm or maybe anxiety or fear of some sort, right? Especially right now, like we get all the, you know, the, the media, you know, you know, talking about doomsday mm -hmm. and the economy is going down. So, so many people are just like basically go through fear, anxiety, and overwhelm their whole day. And so when we realize like, hey, if we, if we put a little effort into training the right techniques and we go, hey, I can basically align myself for the day and I can decide what energy I'm going to bring to my day, it, it's, it becomes people's lifeline. And they quickly go, I will never go without my morning, you know, inner training ever again. 
because basically it, it, it makes me feel better. It gives me access to joy, peace, fulfillment on demand. And it basically sets the tone for the day so that I, I perform at my highest capacity when I'm with my family going to work and doing the things that I do. Yeah, you know, that, fantastic. I love that. And, and I really do think that people need to take much more uh, or pay much more attention to the inputs that they have. Like, as you say, when you wake up in the morning, do you immediately like switch on the news? Do you start to and and let's face it, the news is not there to inform. It's there to provoke a reaction, yeah. regardless of where you, you know, regardless of whatever news it is, it doesn't matter. Um, and so, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think I think a lot of people set themselves up in the day or they start with social media and they get into comparison culture and go, oh, my, look, Joey's life is great. Mine sucks. And, you know, I have no idea what your life is really like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here's another, here's another question. So as you went on your journey and as you were putting this together, what were what were or was some of the or what was some of the most surprising things that you came across that you really really didn't expect it was almost like you know counterintuitive to you or you were like wow i, I never realized that this was the way it should be you know one of the one of the biggest things that that i that i took away that was that, that really hit me was was the understanding of of instant transformation like like transformation can truly happen in an instant you know, mastery and excellence definitely is cultivated sure. over time. And and what I mean by that is like when I look at different you know, junctures in my life, um, like like the story that I gave earlier, right? When I was really young, you know, there was this moment where where well, for whatever reason, I I was able to perceive the reality of my life and existence differently from the moment just previously before, right? So so like if you remember, I basically looked around and I said, I'm here to live for something more. I simply mm -hmm. can't continue living the way I am. And I, I quit the drinking, I quit partying, I, I moved out of an apartment that I was living in. Like literally my life completely transformed in that moment. And then I had to nurture it, right? I had to kind of cultivate it over time and, and realize the outcome of that instant transformation and that moment of paradigm shift, right? Another you know, moment where, where you know, I noticed that that happened um, was when I transitioned, uh, I was a competitive martial artist. And, and I remember this moment where I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm complete. Like I'm done competing. You know, I won three world championships and I, I loved the discipline all, of all of that. And my, my teacher, my master quit training me um, and, and kind of went into retirement, if you will. And, and when that happened, I remember stopping and going like, I, like martial arts is not my, my lifetime passion. I really want to be about service and impact. I want to do everything I can to make a difference in the world. And I, and I, and like that moment of awareness, that paradigm shift of mine and owning that as who I was like, Hey, I am the person who's going to go out and, and do what I can to contribute to humanity, contribute to people's lives, make a difference. It's like that, that moment that I owned that was the moment of transformation. And then, and then I trained it and it unfolded over time. And so what that taught me was no matter what's going on in my life, if I'm willing to stop and take the moment and go, in what other way could I perceive this? It gives me access to answers that most people just don't, don't have access to, right? Because we get so caught in the current way we look at things and assume that's the way it is when that's just one way it could be. That's just one option of how it is, right? So we could look at, you know, the, you know things going on in the economy right now. We could go, oh my gosh. You know, it, it's so challenging and it's so hard mm -hmm. and I don't know what's going to happen and it's all going to fall apart. Like that's one paradigm we can look at reality with. Or we can look at the same reality and go, you know what? With change presents opportunity and I'm going to actively seek out the opportunity and I'm going to see how I can leverage this time to create the outcomes and the life that I aspire to. And, and so many people accelerate their wealth and, you know, their growth during mm -hmm. times like this. And so I'm going to be one of those people. And who we bring ourselves as to what's happening is really going to determine your experience of what unfolds in front of you and the outcome that occurs. And so something that I've taken away and, and that I ask myself regularly is how else can I perceive what's happening here? And what is the way I need to perceive what's happening such that it gives me access to who I want to become and the life I want to create? Whether that's relationship, whether it's you know finance, whether it's health, I go, who like how do I need to perceive reality right now? So that it gives me access to who I want to become and what I want to create, knowing that there are different options if I'm willing to sort of almost discount, you know, or give myself permission to go outside of what I what I can currently see. 
Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think is fascinating too is, um, is I think, as you said, like, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of angst in the world right now. There's a lot of things going on and I think, and people are naturally, uh, you know, naturally get uh, very apprehensive in that. But I also think sometimes you need to look back and realize how far you've come and all the things and how resilient and how resourceful you really are. And, uh, you know, because we've all had our meandering life journeys like you or yourself. And I think sometimes people don't tap into tap into the past, not in a way that holds them back, but in a way that actually says, yeah, you know, I can do things. I've, I've made it to here even. So uh, I'm, I'm still going. So I've, I've obviously got something. Yeah, exactly. I think that's awesome, right? That's one example of a great paradigm to, to take on during times like this. Like, hey, I'm resilient. I, it, times in the past where I thought it wasn't going to work out, I made it through it. I'm stronger as a result. I'm more capable. That's what's going to happen this time. And just by focusing on that's what's going to happen this time, it's like we we, we, we embody ourselves in a certain way. We, we choose who we're going to be in that moment that truly does drive, um, you know, ultimately the, the, the result that we get. You know, if we if we own this space that, that we really do, everything in our life is an inner event. We create from the inside out and we start paying attention to, hey, how do I feel in this moment? How am I looking at my reality? What what is the the paradigm that I'm living in? Right. What's the belief that I'm holding right now? And if we really put credence on that belief that I'm holding, that lens I'm looking through, the emotion that I feel like that is what's creating my existence. That's what's defining this moment and setting up my future. And if we and if we see that and, and, and sort of own that in a practical way, well, then we can bring the self that we need to be to the situations in our life and trust that that's going to create not just the experience of the moment we want, but also set us up for the future we want to create. And and you just mentioned something there, uh, the ownership piece, and I think that is so so critical uh, about taking ownership for the for your for where you are today. I mean, for for everything that's happened, uh, as you said, like just take ownership because that's extremely liberating. Because then you think, okay, if I actually own my circumstances, then I can do something about my circumstances. But if I continually just look externally and go, well, it's not really my fault. I'm here because of the economy, or I'm here because that person did this, or I'm whatever it is. Uh, the ownership thing, I think, is so powerful. And again, it's a little bit counterculture today, unfortunately. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I agree 100%. Right. But if we even wrote those two things down, right, that was a great thing you just said, which is like, you know, if I look at the things as though they're, they're happening to me, right, or like, I don't have any control, um, mm -hmm. like that, that drives me in a certain way. If I wake up every day and I go, I don't have any control, I can't help this, you know, here are all the bad things happening to me. If I, if I play that tape every single day, like, and you take a thousand people who play that tape, you're going to see that those thousand people get pretty predictable results and very similar to each other. The person who wakes up and goes, I'm going to create something great today. I'm going to find where my opportunities are to leverage. I'm going to grow a little bit today. Um, I'm grateful that I'm alive and that I can, you know, move forward. Like if we, if we wake up as that every single day, even if it's not natural, right. But we, we start like, mm -hmm. like teaching the mind to think those things and we start perceiving reality that way. And you take a thousand of those people, they're getting different results. They're, they're living a different life. They have different outcomes, but it is very similar to, to each other. And so it's, you know, it's a little bit like, Hey, I got to have the courage to begin to take on the identity that is going to, you know, fundamentally create who I want to become and where I want to go, even if it's not who I am today. Mm -hmm. No, fan fantastic. Listen, Joey, this has been this has been fantastic. The book is called The Inner Matrix, Leveraging the Art and Science of Personal Mastery to Create Life Results. Uh, all of Joey's information and the book will all be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do, Joey. Absolutely. So as you said, you know, I'm, uh, I'm Joey Klein. I'm, I'm founder and uh, CEO of Intermatrix Systems. I'm author of the book, The Inner Matrix. Um, basically at Intermatrix Systems, we really support high achievers to train, align, and rewire their emotions, thought strategies, and the nervous system in a very practical way to create the real life results that, that everyone aspires to, that people aspire to. And, and to date, you know, we've trained over 80,000 people. So love to support um, in any way that I can. It's been great to be here. Yeah, listen, thanks, Joe. I would encourage people to go check out Joey and his work. Check out the book. Listen, 
uh, what, what's that old saying? The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago and the second best time is today. <laughs> so, you know, today's a, today's a great day to, you know, take control of your life and, and uh, start to look at who you really are. So I would really encourage you, go check out Joey's work, go check out the book. Uh, thanks again, Joey. Thank you for watching and listening and I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you.